Hi, my name's Fawn, and I'm glad you could join me. I'm going to show you a small palette knife painting. Again, I love palette knife paintings, so I do a lot of those. This is a little different. This is an 8 by 10 canvas, stretched. I have used a brush to start. I put in purples and whites. You could do blues and whites, or browns and whites, or whatever. Uh, just to have a guide that helps you as you go along. Okay. Of course, you will need palette knives. Maybe just two. One with a thin, small tip. I like the bent handles. Uh, one a little bigger. I'm using a styrofoam tray for my palette. and basics acrylic student grade paint for lessons and demos. I use uh, professional paints for most everything else. Okay, let's get started. I like to start here and work my way down. Lots of paint. Like to use more than one color. So that was dioxanine purple and this is ultramarine blue. I'm going to hold the knife uh, very flat parallel to the canvas and that gives me some really nice mixtures. No. So I could leave that little bit of purple showing. That's fine. I could add a little paint there. It's going to be hard for my hand to do that. So I'm just going to tip it. So I probably should have done that first before I added that cool cloud. I like that cloud, but now I don't like the shape so well, so I'm going to go back right here. That's nice. Just give it a little pull right there. I want to use more white as I come down. maybe even a little bit of pink. So I have some cadmium red uh, medium with white. Too much red, so lots of white. You're gonna use probably a whole tube of white. <laughs> I use a lot of white. Um, acrylics tend to dry darker, so using white helps brighten and lighten them up. Uh, but I like the dark, bold colors because uh, they're harder to get and make than to just start with those and lighten them. It's easier that way to me to have the stronger colors when I need them. Maybe a little more blue down there or purple. Let's do purple. Just a hint. Again, lots of white, a little bit of purple. And I am using a ton of paint on the knife. That's a, uh, that's a problem or a, a habit I have to not use enough paint. So as I go, I remind myself, get a bunch of paint on that knife. It just looks better, makes better mixtures, uh, fills it up a little more quickly also. All right, so here I have a little piece of distant land. I'm going to add a touch of 
burnt umber right in there. And maybe a touch of blue to give it a grayish look. Things farther away have tend to have a grayish look to them, and light blue is a good way to add that atmospheric perspective. Uh, that's just a fancy way of saying it looks further away. that and then the water and we'll start the water I'm just thinking in my mind what color I want next I'm using ultramarine blue again not quite enough paint there yet but I'm not as sure of myself yet so that's okay if the gray kind of gets mixed in to the blue, it gives it a little bit of a kind of a reflective look, I think. I'll put a little more of that brown back in there. And then back to white. So it's getting a little bit grayish. Now here I could go more purple, I could go more blue. It's, uh, it's all a matter of what you like, what you want. And I'm trying to leave some little thin lines. I'm kind of tipping the knife a little more. So you put some paint on and then you tip the knife and draw some lines with it. I like the purple showing through, so I think I'm going to add just a little more purple just here and there. And again, I'm taking the knife. The idea is that you're overlapping, overlapping colors. Not just filling it in with one shade. So normally I go into greens here. And, uh, excuse me, I just stuck my elbow in the paint. want to keep your wife your knife kind of wiped off as you go you don't want it to get too much paint just piling up it's getting harder to get to the bottom so I'm gonna flip it and then I can fill this whole area in so I like my little grayish color I have there for the land so I think I should do that here. So this is fur number and white with some blue. That'll give me a sandy color. And maybe I'll put a little of that up into the water. So this painting will go a little quicker because it's smaller and because I'm using a lot more paint. <laughs> At least I hope it goes quicker. Some of these get really long and I try to edit them and I'm not that good at editing yet, but I'm learning, I'm learning as I go. All right, so this is kind of a lay-in. I am going to add waves. sand down here. I think I want it a little sandier over there. And I could add a touch of pink in my sand because I have pink in the sky. And wet sand will reflect just like water does. I don't have enough paint over there. That's a little better. All right. 
turn it over. A nice finishing touch is to paint these edges when you're done. You go back and take a brush and just finish out your edges to kind of match. Okay, so I could stop there, um, but I like to go a little too far and too much. Um, sometimes that's how you learn. So then you next one, you just stop a little sooner. But I want to see if I can uh, add some actual thick paint for waves, kind of like I did that nice thick cloud. So up closer, I'm kind of tapping. And I'm trying not to make it too straight. The idea is to give it a little curve or bend or places it's thinner or thicker, so it's not all just one straight white line. Here. Now as things get further away, they're a little smaller. So I chose that spot because there's a nice dark shadow there, and that looks nice under that white line. It kind of makes it look a little more like a wave, the top of a wave. So you can see this one's very thin, this one's very thick, this one's a little bit kind of in between, and back there they're just thin, thin, thin. So if you want to brighten any of those up, you try to keep them thin. So if you get one you don't like, let me put one in there that's too big. Maybe right here. A little too big for being that far away. You go back to your darker color and you take some of it out. So this little purple spot needs a little something. So maybe a hint of blue. And then you can always take some light blue and give your waves a little pull, so we'll say, a little curve. Kind of letting those colors overlap. And then some light blue down at the bottom. like a maybe like a transparent wave okay so I'm pretty close to being done there's always more you can do more you can add I'm gonna nitpick a little bit now you can stop anytime you're ready. Palette knife paintings are quite abstract. The, t the tendency is for them to not get completely finished and detailed out. I'm adding this nice little light blue shadow here. Just tapping, tap, tap, tap. I like that. I'm not sure about this right under here. I don't think this wave would be this big without some indication of water. So again, I can add some water that way. A little light blue. Just kind of pulling along there. Just painted my thumb. So now I've painted my elbow and now my thumb. Now I'm just kind of evaluating strengths and weaknesses. You should always be objective, step kind of out of yourself, 
can uh, flip it upside down or look at it in a mirror and look for things that bother you or things that you really like. So you want to exaggerate or enhance things you like and uh, take care of things you don't like. So I'm not real happy yet with what's going on here. I really like this. I like the, the dark to the light, which adds depth. I like the thick paint up there in the clouds and the thick paint down here, but this area is kind of like, mm -hmm. so what I think is maybe um, some division, some water back here, kind of hitting that shore. So to make that shoreline uh, further away and uh, make that hill land mass a little smaller, I will go higher. I will put this white higher into that. And now I'm off to the side painting sideways, so sometimes things are a little crooked. You can make sure yours is straight, not crooked. <laughs> that would be smart. I'll be able to tell later. So I'm making this back here a little bit uh, too wavy, too much going on. That's fine. I'm going to darken some of that back up. Scraping out just a little bit. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you might have learned something, picked up a few new tips. And uh, hit the like button if you would, if you liked it. <laughs> of course, if you didn't, then don't. And, uh, and subscribe. I'll be working on some new ideas shortly. Thank you. Bye.